modifying a 5 inch gauge Great Western 14XX steam locomotive. And this is part 12, calibrating my boiler test gauge and performing the hydraulic test. John, who works at the steam workshop, offered to test my gauge to make sure that it was accurate. I always thought it was somewhere near, but you can't beat having it perfectly accurate. So this is the test rig. It's not exactly new, but there's nothing much to go wrong with it. It's a load of weights on a small hydraulic pump. And by adding these accurate weights to the pump ram, you get a pressure reading on your pressure gauge, which should correspond exactly to the weight that sat on the hydraulic ram. In this clip, John is not calibrating the gauge yet, he's assembling the apparatus. Very shortly, he's going to fit my pressure gauge on the top of it. So then when he puts a weight on the hydraulic ram table, the needle on my pressure gauge should then indicate in pounds per square inch the pressure generated by the weight being sat on the hydraulic ram. You will see as John starts to add the weights, the pressure goes up on the gauge. What you will also see is John spins the weights to make sure that the table is free. So here's weight number three on the ram table and the pressure is increasing. And each time John rotates the pump handle, the relative pressure is transferred to my pressure gauge. I immediately noticed that my pressure gauge was reading about five pounds per square inch over the weights on the ram. And this is not a major issue because at least the pressure on my gauge would be showing four or five PSI more than it should be. We're really concerned with higher pressure ranges. Generally speaking, I would never need to test a boiler to less than 160 pounds per square inch. So I'm only really concerned with the accuracy around that value. If it's slightly over, that's okay. If it's slightly under, that's okay as long as I know about it. For instance, I need to know that when I pump up a boiler to 180 pounds per square inch, which is twice working pressure for a boiler running at 90 pounds per square inch, it needs to be 180 not 160. But as it turned out, in a very linear style, every time we put weights on, my gauge was reading about five or six pounds per square inch over what it should have been reading in an ideal world. And as I've just mentioned, this is fine because if I test the 200 pounds per square inch, but I'm really putting in 205 pounds per square inch, it's very little and it's an even healthier margin of error. My pressure gauge is not a very expensive one. To get a really good one, you're talking a lot of money for them. This one is a sort of average pressure gauge that you would have on an air compressor supply. And the board on tube inside it is quite small. So what is a board on tube? Well, it's a metal tube that's bent into an arc, almost a circle, that when you put pressure into it, it tries to straighten out. But this metal is curved, and as it tries to straighten out, it moves the pointer. After we finished the test and John was putting the equipment away, I took the back of my pressure gauge to have a look what was inside. And this is what I found. The coppery coloured part, which I think is phosphor bronze, is the board on tube. A flat hollow tube. And this is connected to the needle with a very fine spring. Back in my workshop now, the pressure gauge is screwed into my test rig and I'm nearly ready to test the boiler on this 14XX Great Western Railway locomotive. And once again, as I say in every episode of this series, please note this is not a King Scale or Silvercrest model locomotive. This engine was bought directly from the manufacturer in China. I'm making a modification to my test rig. I'm actually fitting a steam tap on top of the pump, which will allow me to lock off the pressure and stop any water from leaking back through the pump's valves, which means that I can go and have a cup of tea or whatever I want to do for 10 minutes, and when I come back, if the boiler is still at the same pressure, then it's OK. And by the way, the gland on the valve is completely steam and pressure tight. I actually tested that with the hand pump before I fitted the valve. So now it's time to start the test by filling the small tank with some water. You don't need a lot of water in the tank to perform a hydraulic test on a model steam locomotive because all of the water has been put into the boiler before I start. The only part of this boiler that I haven't plugged is the regulator. The regulator is shut and I'm going to find out how much is actually passing the regulator. This is quite common. The only way to do it would be to remove the regulator and I really don't want to do that. It's a brand new engine and in no time at all it goes straight up to 200 PSI 
but the regulator is letting some water out to the cylinders. So periodically I had to top up the pressure with the pump to make up for the amount that was being lost down the regulator, which in reality wasn't a lot. This is the view from underneath in the firebox, and as you can see, it's perfectly dry. No water's leaking from any of the stays, so that's a good thing. When I look at the front part of the boiler, this is the smokebox tube plate, again it's the same. No water is running from anywhere. The only bit of water leakage is down through the cylinders and out of the cylinder drain cock. The curious thing was, when I said that the regulator was leaking slightly, it only leaked down to about 160 pounds per square inch, then it just stopped at 160. So I kept having to top it back up like this, which is perfectly okay. So I kept this up for about 10 minutes, I think. I know my arm started to ache, and then all I did was slacken off the union and the water squirted out. And as you can see, it's not a lot of water to get to that pressure, but if this was steam, it would be an entirely different thing. Before using a model steam boiler, which is a pressure vessel, you really must carry out a hydraulic test without exception, and always cap off every one of the fittings, particularly the small pressure gauge on the boiler, which really would only be going up to about 100 or 120 psi, so the small pressure gauge would probably not like being hit with 200 pounds per square inch, which could permanently damage it. In this clip I'm removing the blanking plugs, then I can carry on with the modifications to this engine. One viewer said, where's episode 12? Because what I did was, I put episode 13 up first. That was the one where I accidentally drilled a hole in the foot plate in the wrong place. And I thought it was very apt to use 13 for the number where I made a big mistake. But then I repaired it. This, by the way, is the original boiler test certificate from the manufacturer. And on the right hand side of the certificate, if you look at it, you will see that it says test pressure 140 psi and working pressure 90 to 100, this is not right really. But regulations are different, obviously in different countries. But I'm afraid that if I'm going to pressurise a boiler to 90 pounds per square inch, which is what I'm going to pressurise it to, I want it to at least be good at 180. But at least I have a margin of error. I could run this boiler at a working pressure of 100 pounds per square inch, but that's probably quite a lot for a small engine like this. And it's better to be safe than sorry. That's it for this one, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.